we're gonna bait up and try that long line. Now I've not, I've not been the nadder do on it, promise. So I don't know what the response is gonna be. Um, I don't wanna put another ball in. I say I last put one in, it'd been about sort of 15 minutes ago now. So I'm literally gonna put a hook bait on and we'll see what's what. Now, I'm gonna start off on a single maggot. As I say, I've got loads of uh, variety and options in my, in my hook bait, you know. It might be that they prefer uh, dead maggots, might be that they prefer a white over a red, or vice versa, you know, who knows, I don't know yet. And that's the beauty of like starting off. So we can start to suss the peg out now. So I'm just gonna give it another few casters there as a guide. And then we'll ship out and see what's what on this long line, if we can avoid all the leaves. Right, so laying it in now, because it's completely flat bottom out there, I'm just gonna lay the rig into the side. I'm gonna hold it, hold that float out. You're in on it, Rich, you're in on it. Hold the float out until the line starts to come under the float, and then I'm just gonna drop it. So you can see pretty much, we're fishing pretty much straight away. Um, I've got that L shape going on, so I've got that tight line from my back shot to my float and we're straight in. So it's just a case of reading what's going on. Do you know what? I'm not even on my markers. Here's me. Can you see him fishing? Here's me telling you how important it is in your markers. And I've just not done it. How dare I? I do apologise. So I'll come back to my marker. So that joint's on that leg. I line up with the tree. So let's see what happens now. I'm in fishing in the right spot. Now, experiment on the day with, you know, sort of moving your rig. Usually, most of your bites will come just after you've moved it. Now there's a bit of wind got up out there, so that's the that's the beauty of them back shots. You know, my pole can be doing what it wants over the top, but it's going to keep that flow exactly where I want it. But usually most of your bites will come just after that little movement. That's what you'll get. Now we're shutting it like we have done, we're gonna, you know, look to get sort of lift bites and that where obviously your float comes up. But most of the bites, the proper bites that we're gonna get, they're just gonna be going nice and slow. You don't usually get sort of fast bites or anything on it. It'll be nice and slow. And what we have got as well, which is nice, is a undertow going from right to left. So the opposite way to the wind. Um, so the other thing you need to experiment with when it's like that is how you lay your rigging. I put the rigging to the right, but sometimes laying it in, so we had a lift bite then. Sometimes laying it in this way to the left with the tow, that can make a difference. So what I'm looking for, um, basically I've been feeding it for, well, over an hour. I'm realistically looking to get a fish pretty quick. If I don't, um, then either obviously all my bait's gone, so what I'll do is I'll put another little ball in, and if I don't catch anything over that, then I know obviously I need to start doing things to bring fish into the peg. I know there's a few fish there because there's bubbles coming up. There's a few bubbles, so there's signs of fish there. We've just had that little indication then as well. But it might be that, obviously, we caught really well on, on the waggler line, loose feeding the casters. It might be that I need to do something to draw more fish in. And then, obviously, with the ground bait, that gets them to go down. One thing that you must do, certainly in match conditions, is maintain your feeding process. So this short line, again, every sort of two to four minutes, just give it a few casters there. I won't bother with the waggler line again. Obviously, match condition, I won't even come off it. But this long line, I would have expected to catch a fish on this by now. Um, so I think what I'll start doing with, with how effective that loose feeding was, I think what I'm going to do is start pinging a few casters out there. I know there's fish there because there's a few blowing and fizzing and what have you. So I'm going to start pinging a bit of bait out. Not, not loads. I don't want to put loads in completely like, you know, fill them up or what have you. There's not loads there. See, that was a little dink then. Ah, oh, Rich, you fall over then, mate. I do apologise for that uh, expletive that Rich has just said then. But well, he nearly went in. Yeah, so what I'm going to look for is, you know, if I get sort of like little dinks just after I've fed, and obviously I know that there's fish coming into that loose feed, but what I don't want to do is draw them off the bottom out there. I want to keep them on the bottom. So I don't want to consistently put that uh, that loose feed in. I will show, you know, that... that that's what that short swim is all about. It's priming it for, for later on. But this long swim, I thought it would have gone by now, to be honest with you. That was a bit of a lift then. It's a bit of an inquiry then. Oh, I'm with... I think we might have far looked him, actually. Yeah, he's fell off. So we far looked him. So that could have been down to, to that loose feed that's going in. I would 
I've expected to get a fish quicker than that, so I'm going to start experimenting with hook baits. That was on a red, I'm going to try a white one now. You can, you know, you can cancel these things out pretty quickly. Obviously that wasn't right. With the whole essence of sort of feeding a swim for so long, you should realistically expect to catch a fish within five minutes when you've been over it. Uh, certainly when you're after silvers. Carp and F1s might be a little bit different. You might have to take your time and be patient, but with silvers, you should have a pretty, a pretty fast response. So it might be down to, you know, we've got the wrong hook bait on, which is why we're putting a white one on now. And we'll see what's what. So again, lay it into the side. Hold that float out until the line comes underneath it. And I'm going to ping a little bit of baiting. But if we file up on another one, I'll stop it and just, just use the ground bait again. As I said, touched on before, it could all be down to the, the colour of your hook bait. Uh, we, had a, we had a bit of sun coming out. Certainly on that waggle line, white, white maggot seemed to be better. We started on the red, but it changed over to a white and it was better because the water is clearing up and that sun, that sun will be out any second as well. So we'll see if we can tempt one quicker on a white maggot. Just feed that short swim. So there's bait going in that. And as I said before, experiment with how you're laying your rigging. I'm certainly going to experiment with moving it. As I said, most, most of your fish will come after that, that movement. And also, you know, if there is quite a bit of toe on, let it, let it run through with the toe as well. That can make a difference. There is odd tiny bubbles coming up out there so there is fish around hey we had a jumper that took its time so i've not fed again since we had that that carp it's taken about three minutes i suppose to get this skimmer on a white maggot i'll give it a few more casters it's a bit too early days to see whether it'll make a difference or not yet but as regards topping up, um, basically, once I go sort of eight or ten minutes without anything, no signs and no fizzing, that's when I'll do another top-up ball. don't want to keep putting it in all the time. I don't want to be putting in, you know, after every other fish or anything like that. I want to make sure that it's all gone so that they can really pick my hook bait out when I put some more in. But it's fish like that, that you know, the, the proper bonus is these skimmers, and this is what you want. Just feed me short swim. Well, it's fish like that, you know, which are commonplace in these commercials and they're overlooked by a lot of anglers and, you know, you can't overlook fish like that. You know, big dirty skimmers like that, they're, they're proper weight builders, they're awesome. So wherever they're in, I'll always make sure I go for them this time of year because you can have a fantastic day on them. So, I'm going to catch another one, I reckon. Let's try that white maggot again. Incidentally, topping up wise on that short swim, <coughs> I'll be feeding every sort of like two to four minutes. Get on them rich, that's all I'll be putting in, sort of like 20, 25 casters or something like that. Just put them in. Again, I don't know what the response is going to be, but hopefully that's where we're going to catch most of our roach. So if it's anything like what the waggler was, that bait's going to be getting nailed, you know. If not before it's the bottom, certainly on the bottom, it's going to be getting nailed. So I reckon. We'll carry on with them skimmers for a little bit more. And then, so if I go this time, let's say if I go sort of a few minutes now without a bite, we're having a few indications then. We've got that carp out of our swim. <coughs> if we go a few minutes now without a bite, that's when I'll come back and I'll, I'll put another top-up ball in, sort of like golf size one. But I'm going to carry on pinging these casters in because that seemed to be right. <coughs> Definitely seemed to be drawing a few fish in, but... The fact that there's odd bubble coming up out there, you know, there is there is a few fish down there feeding, so I think the trouble we had before when we first went in, there was just that carp there. Obviously he's waddled out of the way now. It should make way for our lovely skimmers. So that's what I'm talking about before, the eight to ten minutes, that's gone. Not I'd really had another sign, I had a tiny little roach, but that's uh, that's been irrelevant pretty much. So what I'm going to do is come back and I'm going to put another little top up ball, golf ball in. Because we should be getting quicker responses than this now. So whether that carp's come in and just like hoovered a lot up, who knows, we'll soon find out though, if we get a bite quickly over this top up ball. Golf ball size, 
and put it in nice and accurate. And then we'll see what the response is. So line up with our markers, put it in on that tree, douche. Let's go. <coughs> Let's get straight back on it. A few casters there. Seems that old bait over. Let's see if we can snare a skimmer over that ball because they were definitely coming in before. We we're getting signs and bubbles and everything. So I think it was just that carp just come in and just nailed a lot. Pretty much. But I wanted to see what the response was like first from the fish. I didn't want to just, after that skimmer go in, put another ball in straight away and expect them to be there. I wanted to see what the response was. So it might be that's what we need to do, put a ball in after every fish. As I say, all the time, we're just trying to work out the best best way for the fish or however they want it on that on particular day. Because <coughs> like ice cubes, are proper cold. Oh, it's nice and visible. That's sun rich, isn't it? So now we know we're fishing now right over that ball, the ground bait. Come on, you fishies. There's a bit of an inquiry then. Bit of encouragement. Oh, that was on, a bit of encouragement. But that snapped the far up as well. Oh dear me, come back and check that old bait, I don't think that was a skimmer, it was far looked but it felt like a little carp so <clears throat> I think that ground bait might be drawing the carp in. I said we've got that other swim to, to fall back on and again I keep coming back to it but match conditions that, that waggle line that was solid, that was absolutely black so it might be that you know it turns out like this on the day but when they're having it you know this is a proper proper way of catching a big weight of fish in a short space of time some little inquiries there whoa that was a dink then <coughs> <coughs> so you see how quickly they come over that ground bait obviously put that ball in we've gone straight over it file up one and then we've had a bite again almost straight away so it tells me that they're, they're coming right into that feed so it might be that we uh, you know catch a fish and then we have to feed straight after it certainly if the bigger fish if the smaller fish you know it'll probably be you know catch two or three smaller fish and then top up again we're just trying to work it out as we go on Yeah, more like it. I don't know if it's a skimmer or not, though. Yeah, I think it's a skimmer. So, to me, that seems right. They're coming right into that ground bait. So, I'm going to go and put another little ball in after this one. Because we file up one and we missed a bite almost straight after it, and then we've just up this. So, it tells me that they're on that ground bait. So I'm going to go put another ball in as soon as I've had this one. This is what we want. Yeah, I love these skimmers. <clears throat> More like it, Rich, isn't it? Ooh, look at them beauties. Right, top lip. Love him in. Right, so before I do anything else, nice and quick. <coughs> Let's up it down there. And go and feed again. I'm not putting any more feed in whatsoever in the ground bait, just using what we had in before. So there'll be a few casters, maggots, and a bit of worm in there. <coughs> but if this is the pattern that they want, then it tells you that they're, you know, they're having a bit of a chew like. The nice and accurate douche right on that tree. Straight back. So the beauty of doing it this way, rather than putting like a little pot on, which you might think will be a bit quicker, is 
once you've come back, you know, after you're putting that ball in, sorted your rig out and everything, baited up, gone back out there, that ball of ground bait's on the bottom waiting for you. That's why I like to do it that way, certainly for skimmers. You know, by all means it can work sometimes having a little pot on and feeding that way, but it's far better, I think, to feed, ship back and then obviously ship right onto that, that ball of ground bait. <clears throat> I'm fighting our way through these leaves, Rich. Oh, these blooming leaves. Oh, it's fell off. <coughs> That'll do. Right then, let's see if we can snare another. And our markers. Give it some short. Wait for that to come under and drop it. Nice. So if it's anything like last time, we should be getting a bite fairly quick. As they come in, you can imagine a fish coming in, attacking that ball, and obviously your up bait's right over it. With a bit of encouragement. Oh. A little sign then, a little liner. I mean, it might be obviously that the the feeding pattern changes throughout the session. You just gotta gotta adapt to that. But at the minute, it seems all the fish are definitely coming into that ball fairly quickly. Another little liner then. <clears throat> Oh, we've got a little F1. If it's far up to not, might be in the mouth. I think that's the key today, though, putting that ground bait in, they're coming right over it. Don't think this is a skimmer, though. I think it's a little F1. But they all count, don't they? Ooh, you see him over there, Rich. Definitely a bit active today, them carps. But although we haven't been on this line long already, it's sort of like, Sussed it out, they're definitely coming into that ball of ground bait. <coughs> Getting signs on it, they're fizzing like mad on it as well. The little baby F1. So, again, match conditions, there's a lot of fish there, so I'd stick with it, but we aren't in a match. So, what I'll do is go on the short line and see if them lovely big roaches have rocked up on that. But as I said, match conditions, well, for one, I wouldn't come off the waggler, and then for two, I wouldn't come off this because there's loads of fish there. But we'll get snarled up in them big roaches now, hopefully on that six metre line. <laughs> <laughs> 